Hello, my name is Chris Wraith. I'm the Technical Officer for the International Powered Access Federation. And today I'm going to talk to you about planning for emergency rescue from a mobile elevated work platform. It is something that nobody ever wishes to get involved in and it is something which is a very rare occurrence. But should you become stranded or know, be in a situation where you know someone who is stranded, there needs to be a plan to be able to rescue people who work at height. Mobile elevated work platforms are becoming more and more popular as a safe and efficient means of work at height. There are now over 40,000 mobile elevated work platforms in the UK at the present time. And they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, have different designs, different safety features and go to different heights. They have become a success because they provide safe and efficient means of working at height and reduce the risk of accident compared to other means of access. When working at height there is a legal requirement for emergency and rescue plans to be in place. But apart from it being a legal requirement it's also common sense. Common sense because the speed and ease of a rescue can make a very significant to reducing the, the injuries sustained by anybody stranded at height. With this in mind, uh, safe rescue capability is designed and built into all MUPs. It is a requirement of all manufacturers in the design standards that they have to build in auxiliary controls in the platform and they have to have additional controls on the ground to be able to effect a rescue. As I said earlier, there are over 40,000 MUPs in use currently in the UK. And the, the different MUPs have different control panels and different design features. So it is important that you are aware of the control panels and the designs when using the machine. Otherwise you may get in a situation where you're stranded simply because you just don't know which control lever to operate. So. We have to plan for emergency rescue and it is done in four simple stages. First of all, it is looking at the possibility of what can go wrong. In other words, risk assessment. Identify what could reasonably go wrong and how it could affect those at height. So once we've done the risk assessment, we then look at putting preventative measures in place to be able to reduce that, those risks. Implement suitable measures to eliminate or reduce the possibility of things going wrong during normal use. With those preventative measures in place, the risk of being stranded in the air or having an incident in the air are vastly reduced. But if they are, um, if, if an accident does happen or an incident does happen where someone is stranded, there needs to be a suitable plan to be able to rescue that person. Suitable means of lowering the person safely to the ground. And finally, when you have got a plan, that plan needs to be communicated to everyone involved in the procedure and it has to be practiced. So let's look more closely at each of those four stages. Let's look at risk assessment. And as I say, some people get confused about the word risk assessment or hide behind the word risk assessment. Well, really, all it is is looking at planning, good planning. And in this case, it's considering what could happen when you're working with a mobile elevated work platform and working at height. Well, there is a possibility that the machine could fail or the machine could have a malfunction get and leave you stranded in the air. There is the possibility of external influences for other vehicles moving around the site and, and impacting with your machine or even just loose materials falling on the machine and getting wedged within the machine. There's possibilities of operator becoming incapacitated. That may be through illness or injury or it may even be that the overload sensor in the boom has been activated and no one knows how to deactivate it. Then there may be no one on the ground to assist with any rescue uh, should someone become stranded. 
or even no one's familiar with the ground controls to be able to lower the machine. And, and it's also, even if they do know how to lower the machine, they may not have the key at the ground controls to be able to lower it. And lastly, there may be unsafe practices taking place which increase the risk of, of, of injury or being stranded at work at height, which may, all of these incidents, increase the risk of a need for a rescue. So, before we actually get to a rescue plan, we need to have active prevention measures on site, in place, to reduce all the risks that we identified on the previous page. We have to make sure the operator is familiar with the controls of the machine. As we've already said, there are lots of different controls and different features and safety designs on these machines, and those operating the machine need to be suitably aware of where they are and how they work. So it is vital when you get onto a machine or going to use a machine, the operator and those affecting the rescue have been familiarized with that machine, know where the control function descent devices are and know how to use them. On a daily basis, the MUPE should have a pre-use check to make sure it has not been damaged and a part of the pre-use check is doing a function check to make sure all the controls work. You need to make sure that you have a service engineer available or in reasonable distance available. One of the ways of doing this is, is when you hire a mobile elevated work platform is choose a reputable rental company who has, is nearby and can provide a local service of engineers. So you're not waiting for an engineer to come for, from miles away or waiting hours stranded in the air. You need to have an organised site, and that is one where traffic and is, is controlled and good housekeeping is practised, so it minimises any risks to the, when using the MUP. And the work carried out from the platform should follow a safe system of work and there should be supervision in place to make sure these procedures are followed and done correctly. As we've already said, a key at the ground station will help, help um, be able to make effect a, a rescue, quick rescue. Having a nominated ground person is essential to be able to come to the machine and effect the rescue. And the rescue procedure has to be rehearsed. So all these prevention measures have to be in place. And if these measures are in place, the risk of being coming stranded or the risk of becoming um, injured when working at height will be greatly minimised. So the risk of having to put a uh, rescue plan into place will be greatly reduced. But you still need that rescue plan. And that rescue plan doesn't have to be complicated and over technical. It can be a fairly simple plan and fairly basic plan. And it can follow this kind of uh, theme shown on the slide. For example, if the normal controls in the platform fail to work, well the, the operator can use the auxiliary controls in the platform and that is one means of effecting an emergency rescue. If for whatever reason the operator is incapacitated or the normal and auxiliary controls fail to work, a nominated person on the ground can use the ground controls and then they can use the normal controls on the ground and if they fail and this is getting to be a very 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 unlikely event they can still use the auxiliary or emergency controls on the ground. So you can see by four measures there we have four systems uh, of an of a emergency rescue system. If in very exceptional circumstances those systems don't work then there is a possibility of calling a service engineer and getting the service engineer to attend site in a very prompt way so we can look at the machine and he may know of other ways which are only allowed to competent and authorised people to get the machine down. And then if that fails you may consider using a basket-to-basket -basket rescue possibility. But that would only be if the people stranded in the platform were at imminent risk of, of injury. If, for example, the machine wouldn't lower and you were waiting for a service engineer to attend, and there was no risk to the people in the platform, 
there would be no need to do a basket to basket rescue because that has increased risks with it. So, you've got a plan. Well, write it down. And here is an example of how you can write it down. And once you've written it down, make sure you've communicated it to everybody and get people who are involved in that plan, who have a part to play in that plan, to sign the bottom of it. IPAF produces guidance on its website, and you can see the link at the bottom of the page, of the, of the processes to go through when carrying out this rescue plan. And as I said earlier about the basket to basket rescue, it isn't a process which is taken lightly and there is further guidance in BS 8460 which should be referred to uh, before carrying out any basket to basket rescue. I said we need to communicate the practice of emergency lowering to all those involved, get them to sign the document. The reason we need to communicate it to all involved is because not all controls are located in the same place and I work the same way. And it is vital that the people involved in emergency lowering, whether it be from the platform or from the ground controls, know where the controls are and how they work. So MUP operators, supervisors and others involved must be briefed on the practice of their emergency procedures and their role in that emergency procedure. And drills must be conducted including practicing the use of the ground controls and emergency controls for the specific machine that you are going to be working on. One word of warning. There are those that say an adequate emergency rescue plan will involve having a device in the platform which can be used to be and ensure the occupants to be able to abseil over the side of the machine down to the ground should the, the, the need arise uh, when the machine becomes stranded in the air. The HSE have produced a document, and you can see the document on, this, on the screen, which offers very great caution uh, against using such systems of rope evacuation from mechanical handling equipment. But it also refers to the use of MUPs uh, and evacuating from dissimilar machines. And in the document it states the HSE is aware of several serious incidents and at least one fatality uh, in involved when rope evacuation systems have been used. And these injuries and fat this fatality occur predominantly when these practices are being practiced. So using a rope evacuation system may significantly increase the risk to the occupants of the platform and may put them in more danger than staying in the platform. And IPAF does not promote the uh, system of rope evacuation from a mobile elevated work platform using abseiling techniques. So in summary, the need for emergency rescue is a rare event. 40,000 machines in the UK and very few people have actually been involved in emergency rescue situation. But when it is required, it needs to be done quickly, efficiently and safely to ensure that those involved are brought to the ground and any injuries they may have will be minimised and can be attended in the fastest possible way. So that requires the need for a risk assessment and to implement control measures to minimise the risks that we are identified in the risk assessment. That will vastly reduce the chances of a machine becoming stranded or a person becoming injured while working at height and as such will reduce the risk um, of a requirement for a rescue plan to be effected. But that doesn't mean you don't have to have a rescue plan. You do. You develop a plan as I discussed previously. Make it a simple plan, write it down, communicate it to those involved and then practice it. And as I said earlier, no rescue method that you should consider should introduce inappropriate or increased risk to those stranded 
in the platform at height. And note, having a mobile phone to call the emergency service is not a suitable or acceptable rescue plan. It must be one that is workable and practical. Practical. So, thank you for watching this short video. And if you require any more information on anything to do with the safe use of mobile elevated work platforms, please don't hesitate to go to the IPATH website. Thank you once again.